What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be scripting the back end game pass system. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy it, make sure to smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn those post notifications on if you want to get notified whenever I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like this for me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file I make during this episode. There's a link down below and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. So in the last episode, we scripted this entire GUI and put it all together so we can click on the different categories, see the different products, then click on a product and then be prompted to purchase the product. What we'll be doing in this episode is scripting the back end when a player actually does purchase a product or game pass, then we want to do something and reward them in some way. So the first thing we want to do is go inside of the server script service and we're going to create a brand new folder. We'll rename this to game pass. Then we're going to add a brand new script. We'll also rename this to game pass shop. Now inside of the script, we are going to listen for every single time a player purchases a developer product or a game pass, and then we will do something based off of that. First, we'll start working on the product process of handling the developer product purchases. So of course we are going to need the marketplace service. You guys should be used to this by now as we used it in the last episode. Now the marketplace service actually has a callback function which we're going to use for listening when the player purchases the developer product and the callback is actually called process receipt and we want to actually give it a function. So we're going to create a function up here called process receipt and for right now this won't take any arguments. Then let's go ahead and pass that function directly to the callback without the parentheses and there we go. Now the argument that this function will accept is going to be the receipt info and that's actually going to be a dictionary now for some reason roblox decided to pass all this information through as a table instead of individual arguments on the documentation they actually list out all of the properties of the table so what we'll do is something that we haven't done before we'll actually create a type to represent all of the different properties of the table which will make it a lot easier for us to understand what receipt info actually is so that we can use it by the way i fixed my spelling for the word receipt in all the different areas where we actually wrote it receipt is one of the worst words for me to actually spell. So what we're going to do is we're going to say type receipt and we're going to capitalize that equals. And now this is going to be a table and the first property is actually going to be the player ID and this is going to be a number. And the next property will be place ID where purchased and that will also be a number then we'll have the purchase id which will also be a number then we'll have the purchase id which will actually be a string then we'll have the product id which will be a number we'll have the currency type which will actually be a currency type and finally we'll have the currency spent which will be a number now realistically from this table the only ones that we'll most likely use is the player id you might use the place id where purchase we won't be and you're probably likely to use the product id as well but i figure we might as well include all these properties as those are all included in the receipt. So now that we created this type, we are going to set this argument to be of this specific type. And the reason that we did that is because when we type receipt info and put a period, we can now easily index all these different properties because we know they exist in that specific argument. Now we want to get the player's service as well. And the reason for that is because we want to actually get the player from the player ID passed through the argument. So we're going to say local player equals players get player by user ID. And and from the receipt info, we're going to get the player ID. So the first thing that we want to check is if the player does not exist, then what we want to do is we want to return nil. And when we return nil, this will tell process receipt to handle this a specific way. The way that this will be handled is that whenever the player rejoins the game, it'll once again call this callback and try to give them the product that they ordered. So this is primarily used if the player leaves after they've made a purchase. And then when they rejoin the game, it'll try to deliver their product once again, because we return nil. The next thing we want to do is inside of the game pass folder that we created let's go ahead and add a module script now we'll rename this module script to game pass manager and we'll actually be using this to handle the delivery of the rewards for each of the different products and game passes so you could rename module to game pass manager if you wanted to realistically it doesn't make an actual difference so i'm going to leave this named module first we'll go ahead and create a new function and we'll call that handler and this is going to accept the player and the product id which is a number now if you guys remember inside of a replicated storage inside of configs we have a game pass shop config and this goes over all the different categories and the different configurations for each of the game passes and products so what we want to do is we want to actually require that module script so we'll get the replicated storage and then we'll require that module script just like that so whenever we want to deliver the product we are going to call the module dot handler and we're going to pass through the player and the product id so when we pass this through we want to actually use the configuration to get the cat Category, and then we also want to get the config of the specific game pass or product based on the ID or pass that we pass through here. Now that might sound a little confusing, but don't worry. I'm just trying to explain it a little bit ahead of time before we start doing this stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new function and this is going to be a local function. 
get config. And this is going to accept the product ID, which is also, of course, going to be a number. Then what we want to do is we want to loop through the game passes. So we're going to say for category, comma, passes in pairs. And then we're going to say just game passes do. Now, how this is working is inside of game passes, we have module.passes.coins.pets and dot boosts. So category is going to equal one of these. And then passes is going to equal the table with all the passes inside of it. Since we then have the table with all the passes inside of it, we then want to loop through that table as well. So we're going to say for underscore config in I pairs passes do and now what config actually is is each individual table so for instance if we're looping through this table this would be config this could be config and this could be config as it's going through the loop so now that we're going through all the loops we now actually have access to the pass and the product property so what we want to do is we want to check if the config dot pass so what we want to do is we want to check if config dot product meaning that the config has a product property and if it does we then want to compare the product property to the the product ID that we're passing through. So we're saying if the config has a product and remember some have products, some have pass. So if it has a product, then we're going to check if the product is the same as the ID that we just passed through here. And now the reason that we surrounded this in parentheses is because we're going to actually create an or statement. So on the other side, we want to say or config dot pass and config dot pass equals product dot ID then. So we're saying if the config has the product property and the product property equals the product ID, or if it has the pass property and the pass property equals the product ID, then what we want to do is we want to return the category and the config. So now back inside of the handler, we can create two new variables and we're going to say local category comma config equals get config and we just pass through the product id and in case something really weird happens what we want to do is we want to say if not category or not config then return end so back inside of our game pass shop server script let's go ahead and require the manager that we just created so we'll say local manager equals require script dot parent dot game pass manager then inside of the process receipt function we're going to say manager dot handler will pass through the player and the receipt info dot product id so let's just go ahead and test this out we're now getting the category and config so we'll print out both the category and the config and let's go ahead and start our game now let's go inside of our coins because remember currently we only had this to be working with developer products and not game passes we'll then purchase this developer product right here and we can see that coins and the config have been printed out inside of the game pass manager which is inside of here meaning this is working as it should so now that we know that this is working we then want to actually deliver the product to the player so we're going to say local handled and we won't set this to anything then we're going to say if the category equals coins because remember the categories are right here passes coins pets and boosts so if this equals coins then and now we'll actually create a new function up here and we're going to say module dot coins and this function is going to be called every time the player purchases an item which is of the coins category. So with this function, we accept player as an argument, and then we also accept the amount, which is the amount of coins that we're gonna reward the player. So now back inside of this if statement, we're gonna say module.coins, and then we'll pass through the player. Now currently, to find out the amount of coins that we wanna give the player, we only have that really stored inside of the ID. To make this a little bit easier, what we can do is we can add a new property to this, and we can call this reward, and we're gonna set that to the actual reward amount instead of going off of this string right here. So we're gonna say 200, 276 underscore 400. So that's 276,400 coins. So then we can go back to the game pass manager and pass through the config dot reward because this is now of course a part of the config. Then to actually reward the player the amount of coins that they deserve, we then wanna use the reward utilities that we created a while ago, which is inside of the server script service, utils, and then we have rewards right here. So let's go ahead and require this. We'll say local server script service and then let's go ahead and require the rewards utils now we have the reward utils required all we have to do is we call the coins function we'll pass through the player the amount and if we want to use the multiplier or not i would say that you probably don't want to use the multiplier when delivering developer products but that's of course all your choice so we're going to say false for now and the final thing that we want to do is we want to return true now that we're returning something what we then want to do is when we call this function we want to set handled to the return value of it so when we return true this will 
set handled to true and that'll tell us that the player has been rewarded with whatever they purchased and well actually instead of even using handled we can literally just say return and the function call and that'll return if it's delivered or not so now back inside of the game pass server script shop we're going to set the manager.handler to a variable called purchase delivered so now whatever handler so now whatever the manager.handler returns that is what purchase delivered will be equal to and we'll say if purchase delivered then and we want to return an enum dot product purchase decision dot purchase granted because we delivered the player their product if purchase delivered equals false or nil then we actually want to return a similar enum but instead of purchase granted we want to say not processed yet so if we deliver the product then we're going to return the purchase has been granted otherwise it has not been processed yet let's go ahead start up our game and test this out and make sure that we now get rewarded the coins whenever we purchase this product so we see we can purchase this product and then we can see that the coins have been given to us perfect now what we'll do is we'll actually add the handling for game passes so the marketplace service actually has an event called prompt game pass purchase finished and we want to connect that to a function as well so below the process receipt we are going to create a new function and we'll just call this purchase game pass and that will accept the player which is actually an instance because it's going to give us directly the player who purchases it then the game pass id which is a number and was purchased which is a boolean so now this will actually fire whenever the prompt pops up for the player to purchase the game pass if the player does purchase it then this will fire or if the player clicks cancel this will also fire as well which is why was purchased is included in this as well to let us know if the player actually purchased it or not so now inside of connect we want to pass through the purchase game pass function just like that and now the first thing that we want to do inside of here is if not was purchased meaning the player did not purchase it then we're just going to return end so that we don't do anything below that line otherwise what we want to do is we just want to call the manager dot handler and pass through the player and of course the game pass id now what we want to do is we want to actually create the player data for saving for whenever a player purchases a game pass so inside of our player data script we want to go down pretty far but right before we create the success and return value variables and we're going to create a new folder so local game passes equals instance dot new folder and we'll set the parent of that to the player we'll set the name of this folder to game passes in all lowercase then we need to get the game pass config from the replicated storage so we'll say local game pass config equals require replicated storage dot config dot game pass shop dot passes because we're only going to be using passes none of the other ones are game passes then we actually want to loop through this so we're going to say for underscore config in i pairs game pass config do and now we'll create a new bool value for every single game pass so we're going to say local pass bool equals instance dot new bool value set the parent of this to the game passes folder we just created and then we just need to set the name of it to the config dot id so let's go ahead start up our game and see what this looks like let's open up our players check out our player we see we have the game passes folder and then we have the infinite food vip and two times game passes and those look great now when it comes to actually loading the data we will do that inside of here so let's go ahead and add that directly to here so we're going to say if return value dot game passes then and make sure you're doing the capitalization exactly how i am then we want to loop through the values that we just created and added directly to the player so we're going to say for underscore pass in i pairs game passes get children do and then we're going to set the pass dot value to if the return value dot game passes and then we want to pass through the pass dot name which remember we set the name up here to the config dot id so if the return value dot game passes dot pass name doesn't equal nil then we're going to set it to that value right here otherwise we're just going to set it to false so now we're loading the data that we previously saved and now we need to actually save the data so coming down to here we can create a new variable called local game passes and we're just going to set that to a table then once again we will loop through the game passes just like how we did before so we're going to say for underscore pass player dot game passes get children do and we're going to set game passes pass dot name equals pass dot value and finally all we have to do is add it directly to the data table that we have right here so we're going to say game passes equals this table and there we go the data is now all set up so let's go ahead start up our game we see we have no errors if we check inside of players we can see that we have this folder with all the different values created if we stop the game and we have no errors that we know that this is looking really good and we can see we have no errors we can even check the data 
data table as well. We can see we have the game passes table right here and we can see all the different values for those. So that's looking perfect. Now that we have the data set up, let's go back to the manager. Inside of the manager where we check the category, we'll add an else if statement here. We're gonna say else if the category equals passes. Then what we'll do is we'll set the player dot game passes config dot id dot value to true. So we're going to go inside a player, we're going to access the game passes folder, then access the specific game pass, and we're going to set the value of that to true because we now own the game pass. And realistically, we don't have to return anything here because inside of the purchase game pass function, it doesn't matter if we return anything, that only matters when we're working with developer products. So currently, if we look inside of our config, the pass that we have set up is the times two food. So let's actually implement that directly into our game. By going into our stats utilities module, we can see we have the food multiplier function right here. It really depends on how you want to implement two times food. Does that mean that we want to multiply the multiplier by two? Does that mean we want to multiply the food stat by two? It really all depends on how you want to implement this into your game. But for right now, we are going to multiply the food multiplier by two times. So right above where we return the total, we are going to create a new variable called owns game pass. And we're going to set that to player dot game passes dot x2 underscore food because remember this is the id of that specific pass so we could even just copy and paste that there as well dot value and we're going to say if owns game pass then total will be times equal two so that'll multiply the current multiplier by two and we can actually test this out let's go ahead and actually print owns game pass and now to test this out we want to go to the test tab make sure that we have local server and one player and click start you don't want to do the normal testing which is clicking on play because otherwise you're always going to own a game pass by doing it this way it kind of gives us a fake player to start testing this stuff with so we can see that we have two times food right here we can click on purchase and now we see that our purchase has succeeded so if we pull out our french fry and start clicking we can see on the left side from the server in stats on line 27 which if we look right here that means that we do own the game pass as that is set to true every single time we click we are getting two food every single time because our multiplier is currently one so it's multiplying that by two so we now know that that's working correctly we can go ahead and remove that so with all this being created we're now able to easily deliver developer products and game passes implementing the rest of the developer products should be easy to do on your own depending on how your pet system is set up however you give the player the pets that's all you would have to do very similar to the same way we reward coins right here and then for the passes it might be a little bit more complicated depending on how unique or different your passes actually are but i think i demonstrated a pretty good way of doing this when we implemented the two times food anyways ladies and gentlemen that's gonna be it for this episode hopefully you guys did enjoy as always if you did make sure you smash the like button also the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified whenever i upload more roblox development content additionally i do have a patreon if you guys like to gain access to all the scripts and the game file that i made during this episode there's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out with that being said i hope that you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys in the next episode